Okay, this is how I have my Samsung Galaxy Tab mounted to my telescope for the Sky app. S K E Y E. I just got this uh, hard back skin, anything with a solid back surface. Uh, this one costs about fifteen dollars. Uh, there's some more expensive ones, but if you're going to drill holes in it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go drilling holes in a, a otter box. The back panel is thick about an eighth of an inch and it's hard and the key part is that the tab fits snugly into the uh, the case so once it's mounted it doesn't move or wiggle to mount it to the telescope all I've done was I've taken uh, any piece of plastic really and you can use a raised piece of plastic and drill some holes in it and tap your scope uh, optical tube in order to mount it on there. I've already got a, uh, a triangular mount that was for a finder scope and all I did was I took a piece of plastic and screwed it to the to the raised piece of plastic and zip tied it to the back of the, uh, the hard case. And this allows me to slide it into the bracket on the uh, OTA and use a screw to hold it in place and it doesn't move and it's very solid this is the one that came on the uh, t the tube and it has a retainer bolt and it's already tapped into the, uh, the optical tube assembly for the galaxy tab just like a phone There are a couple differences. Uh, one, it doesn't use the Super Mold like the Nexus or the Samsung Galaxy S. So I had to install a, a custom program to render the screen in red night mode. Uh, you can look on XDA and you can find a universal patch that will patch the uh, framework. And then you can install the calibration program. The calibration program will just allow you to set up different profiles. This one is night mode, red, and you can customize that for a, a lighter red or a darker red, and then obviously you can turn the auto brightness off to reduce it to minimum. If red and, and uh, auto brightness off and brightness to the minimum is still too bright, which it's usually not, you can install a screen filter program, which will let you reduce the screen brightness to the minimum that the uh, device hardware will allow you to move. Keep in mind that it will let you turn the brightness so low that the screen is technically off and you won't be able to see and you have to reboot the phone to get it to set back. So make sure you check the minimum before you set it. You'll notice that the backlight keys, the soft keys at the bottom, I have a piece of electrical tape over it. It does have a screen protector on because you don't want it to get damaged uh, but this, the electrical tape, it doesn't leave sticky residue on the uh, screen protector and it blocks the backlight keys, but the backlight keys still function as you can see. It's sensitive and it doesn't reduce its functionality. The only reason I did that was because inside the program it does have a night mode, but the night mode doesn't turn off the backlight on the soft keys on all devices, only some devices. It does work on the Nexus 1, but it did not work on the Galaxy S or the Galaxy Tab. So everything with the uh, s rendering effects patch installed, you can see that even the menus and all the options are all rendered in night mode red. Uh, this will prevent what is, uh, currently happens in the app is where you'll open up the menu and it'll all be bright white and you can ruin your night vision, especially uh, sucks if you're trying to observed through the telescope. Other than that, everything else works exactly the same. Uh, we'll come back here in a second with another video where they mounts it on the OTA. Okay, here it is mounted into that bracket that I showed you earlier on the OTA. It uh, doesn't really get in the way of anything. The uh, focuser knob is on the opposite side. There is a fair amount of distance between the uh, focuser assembly and the bracket for the Galaxy Tab. 
the bracket just like before I showed you it's mounted directly it's tapped into the OTA uh, it doesn't hurt these things to drill more holes in them they're solid it's just metal you just want to get off any burrs or anything as you can see I put additional taps in the side for uh, additional accessories in the past uh, no issues as long as you tap it in there you get the burrs off it's good to go uh, the device itself is on there it's very stable it doesn't move it's not going to fall off I tried not to use anything that might fall apart like glues or anything like that I got the zip ties holding the bracket to the back of the case uh, it's very sturdy and it's very solid and then the uh, bracket is uh, bolted to the OTA uh, the device is very large, it's easy to see. It's still rendering, rendering in uh, night mode as you can see. You just fire up the app and go ahead and put your eyepiece uh, of choice in and calibrate it. Uh, one thing that I find that helps calibrate it more precisely is I'll start with a uh, wide field view eyepiece and I'll get in the center and then I'll switch to a, a much narrower field view. Uh, so if I start out at uh, 26 millimeter, before I calibrate it, I'll put in something very powerful for the star, like a 10 millimeter, recenter it into the eyepiece, and then calibrate it. Uh, that makes it more accurate, even when you switch back to the wide field view, uh, because the center, putting a star in the center of a wide field view eyepiece, doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly in the center. It just gives a little more accuracy. Um, Hopefully, weather permitting tonight, I'll be able to put it through its paces again and see if it's more accurate with the new update that accounts for geomagnetic declination.